Good morning. Welcome you to the house of the Lord this morning on this beautiful Labor Day weekend. Before we get started this morning, I have a few announcements to share with you. Uh, Children's Sunday School is in need of teachers for the preschool through second grade classes. If you would like to teach, please contact Sandra Gingrich. There is a new video study called Christ in You coming out, and the topics will cover Christian lifestyle, self-worth, evangelism, and using the gifts of the Holy Spirit with emphasis on healing, words of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Also, plenty of fantastic testimonies to be shared. Study is one, is one night a week for nine weeks. To help accommodate everyone's schedule, we will hold the same class on two different days each week, Sunday from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., and again on Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Classes will start on Sunday, September 25th, and Tuesday, September 27th, in the all-purpose room. For more information, please contact Dan Kipp. Uh, before I go to this week's activities, does anybody have any announcements they want to share? Okay, just wanted to check. Okay, for this week, uh, Saturday will be the Recycle to Love kickball tournament starting at 7.30 in the morning. Next Sunday, September 11th, there will be a leadership meeting at 2 p.m. And next Thursday, September 15th, there will be a trustees meeting at 7 p.m. And next Saturday, September 17th, trustees training at 9 a.m. will start. Birthdays this week. Today, Tammy Brooks. Tuesday, Gabe Hildebrand. Is he out there? He's not? Dang. I'll have to get him next week. Jessica Shelley. On Friday, Elizabeth Anderson. Anniversaries this week. Monday, Steve and Barb Taylor. So we wish you all happy celebrations this week. Now at this time, we will get up and spread the love with each other in Christian fellowship.
Would you please remain standing for the call to worship? Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. And would you remain standing for hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance. Good morning. I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and welcome you to our worship service this morning. It's good to have all of you with us today. We always begin our time together by sharing our joys and concerns as God's family. If you have a joy or concern, just raise your hand and uh, they'll bring the microphone around to you. Well, I just have to tell you, it's very nice to be home after a month of traveling. Yeah, it's good to have you And home. it's very nice to know that my son got over his hip replacement. Mm. And he just texted me after four or five days that I wasn't there and said, I miss you, Mom. Somebody else has to get my pills. Somebody has to get my food. <laughs> I said, get off the chair and do it yourself. <laughs>
Now let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we bow before you this morning, we are ever mindful of the fact that we come humbly. We come not because we are worthy, but we come because you have showered us with your mercies. We thank you for the week that you have given us. I thank you for the opportunities that you give us to be here together, especially at the privilege of gathering at the table that the Lord has prepared for us. Father, as we go through this time of worship together, prepare our hearts that we may be humble as we come before you and we would ask as we come to you today that you hear our prayers for the many who need your strength and your healing powers. We thank you for the answers to prayers that we have heard. And we pray that you will give to us the wisdom to be able to discern your moving in our lives. We also ask today that you be with our nation. You know the challenges that are before us. You know the challenges that the world faces as well. And we would just ask that you would continue to bring peace in those lands where peace has not been heard. We ask that you be with those, particularly with those children who find themselves in the midst of war. And Lord, we would ask now that you would be with our church as we go through the many things that Tyler has shared with us this morning, the activities of our congregation. We pray that you be with those who will gather next Saturday for the kickball game and keep everyone safe. We pray these things today in the name of Jesus who taught his people to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sent the special music for this morning.
Thank you. That was great. I still think he has three hands. Uh, <laughs> At this time, we continue our worship of the Lord as we bring before him today our tithes and our offerings. I want to, again, remind you that uh, we are striving for our 100% participation in our fair shares of ministry. And one of the ways that... Uh, that we are raising money for that came to our house on Thursday night. When we woke up on Friday morning, we had a whole flock of pink flamingos in the front yard. <laughs> but I'm warning you, they have left, and they may end up in your front yard, <laughs> okay? I thank the youth for their, uh, the way in which they have chosen to participate in our fair shares of ministry, and I thank all of you for your faithfulness at this point. Uh, according to Amy this week, we are only one month behind in our payments of shares of ministry this year. So praise God for that as we come for our offering time. Father, we do give you praise and thanks for the many ways in which you have blessed our lives. We come before you on this Labor Day Sunday remembering that you have given us work to do and that you have provided the resources for us to carry through with that work. We thank you for these gifts that are presented before you this day and pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that they will go into all the world, that all may come to know the wonderful story of our Lord Jesus Christ and make him part of their lives as well. In Jesus' name we ask it, amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, a prophet. It comes from a time about 600 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior. It comes from a time when the 10 tribes of Israel in the north had already been conquered by the Assyrians, and the people were carried off into that strange land. Now, we have a young man comes on the scene by the name of Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is speaking to the people of Judah, particularly around the city of Jerusalem. He comes at a very difficult time. The people of uh, Judah, of Israel, have been living among the Canaanites, at first, they simply mingled with them, and then they started building their houses among them, and then they began marrying uh, some of the Canaanites, and eventually they took over the culture of the Canaanites as well as the religious practices of the Canaanites. And it's in that environment that God sends this young prophet, Jeremiah. 
In the second chapter of the book of Jeremiah, it's really written kind of like a, a court scene where the people of Israel are on trial and God is the prosecutor. In this particular lesson, there are chapter, there are nine different images that God uses to try to get the point across about the relationship that the people of Israel had with him and no longer have. Today, we're going to look at two of those metaphors. But we begin by hearing the word of the Lord. God came to Jeremiah, and he said to Jeremiah, Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, I remember the devotion of your youth. I remember your love as a bride. How you followed me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, says the Lord. Now, God said, hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, O families of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord. And this is what God asked. He says, what wrong did your fathers find in me that they went after worthlessness and that they became worthless? They did not say, where is the Lord? The one who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, the one who led us in the wilderness, in a land that was desert and pits and drought and deep darkness, in a land where no one passes through, a land where no one dwells. I have brought you, says the Lord, into a plentiful land to enjoy its fruits and its good things. But when you came, you defiled my land and you made, you made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. Those who were rulers transgressed against me. Why, even the prophets prophesied to Baal, and they went after things that do not profit. Therefore, I will still contend with you, says the Lord, with you and with your children, and with your children's children I will contend. Go over to Cyprus and see. Uh, send to Kedar and examine carefully. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods? <laughs> Even though they are no gods. But my people have changed their gods. They have given up their glory for that which does not profit. Be appalled, O oh heavens. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. And this part we want to listen to closely. Have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water. And they have hewn for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. And then God goes on and he con continues to make his case against the people of Israel. And he comes down here to the 20th verse and he says, I have planted you as a choice vine, a holy and pure seed. Why have you turned and become wild grapes? Well, these words were given to the people of Israel in Jeremiah's time as an observation of the way that they were living their lives, but also as a warning to us today in this century. Because today we too have a tendency to mingle with the culture, to give in to the ways of the world rather than to follow the ways of God. There are certain things that I think lead us into that temptation. Same things that perhaps led the people of Israel. The first thing God tells the people is that, hey, 
I remember when you were young, that first love that the people had with me, that first love that we have with the Lord. What happened to it? What happened to it? He says that you have turned and become wild grapes. What happened to it that you have left the fresh waters and become broken cisterns? Well, I do believe that there are a couple things that we can say. The first thing that uh, is said, God makes known to the people. He said, you no longer ask, where is the Lord? Where is the Lord? You have forgotten me, is what he's saying. Pollsters today will tell you that even though we have all the technology that is around us, that yet we are in an age where people are ignorant of the scriptures. I'm always amused when uh, they have on uh, one of those trivia shows, you know, Jeopardy, and they, one of the categories is Bible. Inevitably, that's the last category that's chosen. A couple weeks ago, Carol and I were watching Jeopardy, same thing, last category that was chosen. And only one person there was able to answer all the questions from the Bible, and they were rather simple questions. Where is the Lord? The people have forgotten him. But then God also says, they have forsaken me. They've turned away from the fresh waters, my living waters. Now, he's not talking about the kind of water that you can dip a cup into and, and pour up and drink. But he's talking about the kind of spiritual waters of hope, of joy, of peace, of forgiveness, of reconciliation. Why have they turned away from that? Of trusting God, a God who provides. Why, he said, have you turned away? To know the heart of God, I think we can, can uh, get somewhat of an idea. If you think about the, the pictures we see on TV sometimes of uh, countries like Africa, where people don't have the privilege of turning on a, a spigot and water comes gushing out. But rather, we see them going down to a river or sometimes even just to a, a watering hole, and, and they get a cup that's filled with water that you and I wouldn't even swim in, and they end up drinking it. And our hearts go out to them, and we contribute to all those causes that are digging wells so that these people might have fresh water to drink. But imagine if we also knew that not too far from where these people were di dipping into that dirty water, there was a fresh spring of cold mountain water. And the people knew that it was there, but they chose to dip their cups into the dirty water. How would we feel then? Well, I don't know about you, but I think I'd be a little upset and angry that that was available but that they turned aside and decided to go to that which was unpleasant to drink that could have made them sick. I think that's what God's trying to tell the people of Judah and that God's trying to tell us today that sometimes we turn to those things that are not healthy for us. Guy goes on and he says, I've given you the good things, good fruit. I've given you a good land to live in. God gives, and we are to receive. But God said, you mixed it up. You think you've got to take care of yourself. So you go out, and you dig a cistern. Now, you know, you can't dig a cistern in the sand because the water's not going to stay in there, right? So it's got to be hard work. you got to dig, or you got to crack a rock and keep cracking it until you get enough to hold the water. It's hard work. God says, you're out there trying to do it for yourself, trying to find a way that brings you peace and happiness, joy, hope, forgiveness by the things you do. But I've given you a good land. I've given you a good thing in his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so the Apostle Paul would say, we can't boast about the things that we do, about the, the, the kind of works that we do to earn God's favor God's already given it to us and it's called grace God has given us grace now why do people forget and why do people turn to that which is not healthy for themselves I think there's a couple reasons 
First of all, I think that uh, it's not something that happened overnight. You know, uh, even today, things don't happen overnight. You don't fall in love with someone and marry someone one day and the next day get up and decide that you just don't love them anymore. It happens overnight. It happens over a long period of time, nights after nights and days after days, months after months and years after years. What happens when you give yourself to the Lord at the altar of God and then the next thing you know, Sunday comes and it's time. Well, you know, it'd be better to sleep in this morning. I've worked all week after all. And well, it's time that I uh, rest for myself. And we've got all kind of excuses. And pretty soon we find that we have drifted away from the Lord. I believe that's what happened to these people. They began to drift away from God. I know some of you have been to the shore this summer, right? You get in the ocean. Have you noticed the power of the currents that are there? I first found out the power of currents when I was about 12 years old. My family went to the shore for the very first time. We went down to Wildwood. And uh, my brothers and I, my twin brother, my younger brother, we had never seen uh, the ocean before. But it was really inviting to us. And mom and dad took us to the beach and... Uh, they sat down on the sand and they said, now, you can go out there, but you stay right in front of us. Ever say that to your kids at the shore? You stay right in front of us. Well, my brothers and I went out and we were jumping the waves and we were surfing on the waves and we were splashing around like kids do in the water. And the next thing you know, we looked up and it looked like mom and dad moved because they weren't there anymore. But we discovered that they didn't move anywhere. The currents had drifted us away from them. I believe that today there are many who are drifting away from the Lord. Now, I also think that their problem could be that they lost their priorities. They began to think that success and a house and uh, the culture of the Canaanites was what they wanted. And they began to make that their priorities. I don't know, I forget who did this uh, children's object lesson. It wasn't me, it was one of the parishioners. And they took a jar, and then they took some stones, big stones, and they put them in the jar. And then they said to the children, can anything else go in here? The jar looked filled with stones. And of course the kids said no. And then they took a little bit of sand, and they put the sand in the jar, and it filtered down between the big stones. And again, they said, can anything else go into the jar? No, it's all full of stones and sand. Nothing else can go in there. And then they took a little bit of water and they poured the water in. The lesson was that if we had started with the sand and the water and filled the jar with sand and water, there would have been no place for the big stones, for the things that are priority. God knows that our priorities come first. And that's what happened to the people of Israel. They lost the priority. They forgot that their responsibility was to be the people of God and to make God known in the Canaanite culture rather than to give in to the ways of the Canaanites. And then I think there's also something else that the people of Israel were not aware of. They were sabotaging themselves. They were digging the, these uh, cisterns and... They were living the life of a Canaanite, thinking that it was what was best for them, but discovering that God was displeased with them. And eventually, they too would be carried off into exile because of what they were doing. They thought they were doing what was right, but they were sabotaging themselves. Did you ever go to a, a fast food place, McDonald's or, or Wendy's, and listen to people order food? I'm always intrigued by the people that will order a double bacon ha uh, hamburger and french fries and a Diet Coke. Now, why do you order a Diet Coke if you're going to eat a double cheeseburger with bacon and french fries? You've just sabotaged everything that you wanted to do. Well, I think the people of Israel do the same thing, and we do the same thing today. We pick out those things that we think are good for us, the things that we think are right, and we forget that God has his ways. And he, he sums them all up in Jesus, with Jesus in two sentences. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. 
but we decide instead that success is more important, health is more important, wealth is more important, prestige is more important, and the next thing you know, we sabotage our relationship with God. So today, as we prepare to come to the Lord's table that has been prepared for us, let us ask God to bring us back into that loving relationship again. That relationship that he so enjoyed when he said, I remember the devotion of your youth. I remember the love when you were a bride. I remember when you followed me in the wilderness when you were my first fruits. Let us not forget. Let us not have wrong priorities or drift away or sabotage our relationship with God. Let us come before the table of the Lord, making our humble confessions before him. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for these words this morning, and we do pray that you would help us not to forget, not to drift away from that love that we first experienced with you, not to set the wrong priorities in our life, or to sabotage our relationship with you because of the things we do or the things we say. Prepare now our hearts as we come before you to receive this sacrament of Holy Communion. For we ask it in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We prepare ourselves to come to the Lord's table today. We will receive pew communion today, which those of you who are unfamiliar with that, we will serve the bread and the cup in the pew. You serve your neighbor and they will serve you and then you hold the bread and cup until we have all received, and then we all share together. We begin with the prayer that you'll find printed in your bulletin. We'll start with a moment of quiet prayer, and then we'll pray this responsive prayer that you'll find in your bulletin. Okay, so let us begin with a moment of quiet prayer. Before the heavens, let us confess our sin. Our hearts are far from you, O God. The glitter and the images of our culture beguile us. The things that we can have fascinate us. We have exchanged living in grace for living in our own strength and wisdom. We have resisted using the means of grace. And so we have stumbled and we grope for that which does not satisfy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, O fountain of life. Amen. The invitation to the Lord's table today is that all who are willing to accept the invitation of the Lord, draw near to the Lord's table and take this holy sacrament onto yourself, making your humble confessions before God Almighty. Let us join together in a prayer of blessing of the elements. Almighty and gracious God, we do give you thanks that when we turned away from you, when we have forgotten you, when we have drifted away from you, when our priorities have not been your way and your will, when we have sabotaged our relationship with you through the words we say or the actions we do, we ask for your forgiveness and you have granted that on to us. And Father, we give you thanks now that as we come to you that you are ever, ever faithful. Your steadfast love is always with us. We remember that you showed us that love in your son, Jesus our Lord, when he came into the world, when he sat with those who were lonely, when he ate with tax collectors and sinners, when he fed the hungry and healed the sick. 
Father, we ask that you help us never to forget that on the night when he was betrayed, he took the simple elements of bread and wine. He blessed the bread and broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. And then after the supper, he took a cup and said, this is my blood, a new covenant, which has been shed for you. For as often as you eat the bread and you drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's life, death, resurrection, and his coming again. Bless now, O God, these your creatures of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for all of the world, one in mission and ministry together, sharing the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Empower us by your Holy Spirit so to live in this world that we will one day share in the heavenly banquet that you have prepared for all who are faithful, who have laid down their labors in this world and now re remain with you and the Holy Spirit and our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. We pray it in his blessed name. Amen. Okay, Troy. And we do remember how on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. And then after the supper, he took a cup. And he said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Take, drink in remembrance of me. Will the ushers come forward at this time? body of our Lord, which is given for you. Take, eat, feed on him in your heart with joy, with faith, and with thanksgiving.
blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. Take and drink in remembrance of him, feeding in your heart with joy and faith and thanksgiving. Now, if you'll stand, we'll join together in a prayer of thanks, and then we'll join in singing our closing hymn for this morning. Gracious God, over the generations you have fed your people in so many different ways. In the wilderness, you gave them manna and water. Along the seashore, you gave them bread and fish. Today, you give us bread and wine. You give us that which gives us power to go into the world to share the good news that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Father, we pray your blessing upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.